Hello everybody and welcome. SpaceX has finally launched their monstrous Starship and at the same time have proven that the Kerbal Space Program is closer to real life than we might have thought. So what happened? On April 20th at 8.33 in the morning Texas time, the massive super heavy booster roared to life and lifted the most powerful rocket in history off the launch mount. I was about to say that it fired its 33 Raptor engines, but it appears that three of them didn't ignite or went out very shortly after liftoff. We get to why that might have been in a little while. First, let's recap the rest of the flight. The almost 120 meter tall vehicle rose up into the skies and gained speed and altitude pretty quickly. It went through max Q, the point of highest dynamic pressure, and went on to the point where the second stage should separate. SpaceX already switched to the camera showing the six engines of the upper stage, the actual Starship vehicle, but it would not separate from the booster. Instead, the entire stack began to spin and started losing altitude and speed. Any Kerbal Space Program player will recognize that when this happens, you can pretty much say goodbye to the rest of your flight. And so it was. Two explosions in close succession destroyed Booster 7 and Starship serial number 24 as the flight termination system was triggered, ending SpaceX's first flight test of the full stack in a giant fireball after just about 4 minutes. So, what went wrong? <laughs> Quite a bit, actually. Let's analyze the footage from start to finish. The engines ignited and when it lifted off the pad we can also see other stuff lifting off. Keep in mind Starship's diameter is 9 meters and that dark patch you can see here is about a third to a half of that. It might have been parts of the concrete slab below the launch mount because after all the dust had settled we got this image by Lab Padre on Twitter. It shows some severe destruction under and around the launch mount. SpaceX better think about a water deluge system and flame diverter for upcoming flights. I mean, they already started excavating, kind of. We can also see how massive those chunks of debris were on this angle. Watch the surf on the right side and how the water splashes on all of those impacts. Pretty intense if you ask me. Unfortunately, that debris also hit some of the cameras that were filming the entire event. And not just the cameras, also this van that served as a mobile camera platform for nasaspaceflight.com who were live streaming the launch in addition to SpaceX stream, Everyday Astronaut who one day will fly on Starship as part of the Moon program, Lab Padre and others who are regularly out there at Starbase in Boca Chica to document the development of Starship. Aside from parts of the ground equipment disintegrating, the spaceship itself also started to fall apart. Here we come back to what I said about not all 33 Raptors firing. It appears that three engines weren't active pretty much from the start. Maybe some debris from the concrete that was thrown up into the air destroyed them right after ignition? We don't know yet. But what we can see about half a minute into flight is that something around the flamey end of the stack started to come apart. It could have been one of the hydraulic power units responsible for thrust vector control of the Raptor engines. Three seconds later we see an explosion in the engine section and another engine showing as flamed out on the diagram. By now the plume had changed significantly. While it had appeared rather clean after liftoff, it was now more of a yellowish orange and appeared to be less under control. At about a minute into the flight, five engines were reporting as offline, but if you watch the video closely you can see six engines missing already. You can also see that there is a fire raging between the Raptor engines in the center of the booster. At T plus 1 minute and 55 seconds, a bright flame is shooting out at the back another at T plus 2 minutes and 6 seconds. Three seconds later we can see bright green flames, which is a good indicator of an engine-rich exhaust, meaning at least one engine has started to burn itself and not just the propellant. Rather unfortunate if your plan is to reuse a vehicle, which Starship and Super Heavy Booster are of course designed to do, including the engines. Between 2.32 and 2.34 into the flight we can see the indicator show that the entire stack flips direction. In theory the booster should flip and fly back, but there should also have been stage separation and 
Well, it didn't happen. So far we don't know why exactly it didn't happen. It could be a mechanical failure of the separation mechanism or something to do with the disintegration of the booster and the system deeming it not safe for separation. We will see what SpaceX's analysis will show. In the end the vehicle reached a speed of about 1750 km per hour and an altitude of almost 40 km. While Starship didn't reach all of the aspired mission goals, SpaceX still treats this flight as a success. Their main goal was to clear the launch tower and not destroy it and it's safe to say that they managed to do that even though there appears to be damage to some protective sheets near the base of the tower. Elon Musk already announced that they aim to launch again in the next couple of months. That's probably not fully including the time they need to rebuild the pad below the launch mount or find a different solution to prevent this amount of destruction from happening after every flight. All in all, it was a very exciting launch. The largest and most powerful rocket ever flown with the most engines ever lit at the same time and it made it up into the upper atmosphere before failing. It was even picked up by a weather satellite as shown here by the National Weather Service of the US. The fact of the matter is, even with Starship exploding during the flight, this was an impressive feat. People from all around the industry up to the heads of NASA and ESA were congratulating SpaceX on the flight. And the developers of Kerbal Space Program recognized the familiarity of the flight path and created this very fitting little piece of art. For the next attempt, let's just hope they will find a way to make the launch safer for people and equipment on the ground. Oh yeah, and also fly to space. I mean, the company's called SpaceX and not AtmosphereX, am I right? I for one am looking forward to it. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.